everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. Now you know Walt Disney World is celebrating their 50th anniversary over the next 18 months and with 50 years comes treats. You know it, Disney has released literally over 150 new treats, snacks and drinks all around Walt Disney World and today we're going to eat every single one of them. Just kidding, this would be like a seven hour long video and I can't possibly eat that much in one video. But we are gonna go try a bunch of the new treats across all four parks, a couple at the resorts as well. Let you know which ones are the best, the most Instagrammable, which ones maybe you don't need to enjoy for the 50th. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited, I hope you're hungry. There's a lot of blue stuff to eat. <laughs> section of our treats video I thought we'd do a little snack around Magic Kingdom and grab a treat or two in each of the iconic lands and we're gonna start with Adventureland at Aloha Isle because does it get more iconic and exciting than a Dole Whip? I don't think it does but of course we're getting a special 50th Dole Whip. There are actually three different Tiki Room inspired treats at Aloha Isle. There's the Fifi Gigi Mimi which are pineapple orange vanilla bundt cake stack filled with Dole Whip Pineapple, there's the Showtime with Jose, which is mango and vanilla soft serve with pineapple juice, and then it's got a blue chocolate feather, or there is the Tropical Serenade, which is the one I got. It's the coconut soft serve, you know that one's my favorite, and then Pog Juice, that iconic passion fruit orange guava juice that everyone loves at Disney, and a pineapple cake pop. So, we have the Tropical Serenade here. I love coconut Dole Whip, and who doesn't love Pog Juice? So, I'm excited for this one. It's so creamy and dreamy and perfect and amazing and I love it so much. It's my favorite Magic Kingdom sweet snack. It's so good. Uh, but now I'm going to try and get a little, do what Tiana says and dig a little deeper to get the pog juice with that. just a little cup of heaven. That's what that is. So if you're not familiar with Pog Juice, it's an iconic drink that they have at the Polynesian, Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom Lodge, a couple other places. It goes by a few aliases. Pog Juice most commonly, but they call it Jungle Juice over at Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Lodge. They call it Florida Sunshine at Riviera, but it's passion fruit orange guava juice. It's very popular, very iconic. They were out of it for a while. There was literally a shortage and people were furious. But it is back, clearly, and better than ever because it's in my ice cream. So I'm normally not a float fan. I'm normally team just get a scoop of whatever ice cream flavor it is. But the Pog juice is pretty special. With the coconut, this is really good. I think I'd still personally rather just get the cup of coconut because it's like a lot to get it all together. But it actually is complimenting it nicely. This is a fabulous one. And then you get your bonus cake pop here. All right, there's a very pineapple-y cake pot with them. The texture on that is fabulous. It's nice and moist and chewy. It's holding its shape together. It tastes like pineapple coconut deliciousness because there's coconut on the outside. So I don't even love pineapple, and that's a good cake pot. So this is an A-plus treat, but there's many to choose from here in celebration. For Frontierland, we have got ourselves another 50th snack. Look at this right here. This is called Wendell's Bear Claw, and I got it at Westward Ho, the little cart across from Pecos Bills. Um, and it's a classic bear claw, but it's dipped in chocolate and has hazelnuts um, on it. And then one to point out, the best thing about this bear claw possibly, look at the paper. Y'all, is it not so cute? This is also the paper they're wrapping classic churros in and pretzels throughout the park, and it's just so cute. I want to scream. I love it so much. Also, pro tip, Westward Ho does sell Joffrey's cold brew, and you can add a syrup if you'd like. They've got pumpkin space right now as one of their seasonals. So, yeah, I obviously had to get myself a coffee as well. Also, pro tip, I always like to walk on this walkway and stop, and I have snacks here a lot. Look how peaceful this is. Just right on the rivers of America. I can see the castle over there. This is a good spot to have a little, little moment. Uh, but let's try this bear claw. It's just a normal bear claw, but it's got the chocolate on it, so it adds a little something extra. It's a little on the dry side. So my solution to that is this. 
That's the ticket right there, a little pumpkin spice coffee with your bear claw. Now, this is definitely not bad, and I like that it's not super duper sweet. It mostly tastes kind of like a, almost like a slightly sweeter croissant with some chocolate on it. And while it's good, it's certainly not my favorite by a long shot. I would much rather get um, one of the Dole Whips or there are some other exciting looking things. So I think this one's good. It's simple. If you like a bear claw, you'll probably enjoy it. But there's, there's better and more unique treats, I think, available. But also, I want to give a shout out to the cast member. She saw me geek out over how cute the paper was. So she gave me an extra clean paper. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Maybe put a picture on it and frame it or something. But... Cast members are the best. They're magical angels. And if you're nice to them, sometimes they make a little magic for you. <laughs> Coming in from Liberty Square at the Columbia Harbor House, we have this very fun looking milkshake. It's called the Happy Haunts Milkshake. And it is a blackberry milkshake topped with a purple chocolate glazed donut and sprinkles. And the main reason I'm excited about this one is look at this straw. Uh, the chef actually told me that they were on a backstage tour of Haunted Mansion to gather inspiration for some Haunted Mansion inspired treats for the event. And they saw the wallpaper in there that everybody loves and were like, we need to do something with this wallpaper. So they made these just for the event. And uh, there's going to be two drinks that have these straws. The other one, they didn't have them quite yet, but you can get it here at Columbia Harbor House. Also from the Columbia Harbor House, this is called the Spoon for One More. It is just their clam chowder, but they decided to judge it up a little bit with this black sourdough bread bowl that's supposed to represent a doom buggy. So if you get your clam chowder and your crackers and everything, you may get, uh, you can enjoy it in this fun, festive bowl. My milkshake brings all the ghosts to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. You know, I didn't know what a blackberry milkshake was going to taste like, but it tastes like a smoothie and a milkshake had a baby a little bit. Because it's creamy, like a milkshake, but then it's got that kind of fruit zip on the back end. Um, it, it's kind of like a strawberry milkshake, I guess. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. It's sweet. I'm honestly confused by it, but you can definitely taste the blackberry. Now, we all know I don't love donuts, nor do I like things that dye my face different colors. So this milkshake accomplishes both of those things at the same time. But what would it be if they weren't gonna dye something weird blue, purple color? I mean, it tastes like a chocolate donut. If you like chocolate donuts, I think you'll like it. It's not, it's a good donut. I know I don't like donuts, but I eat donuts professionally sometimes, so I know what a good donut is. It's not really yeasty or anything, it's definitely a cake donut, but you've got that, I mean, this is all, I, all over my hands, so. Chowder time. New England clam chowder. Is that the red or the white? Ooh, I can never remember that. Bonus points to whoever knows what movie that's from. It is not a Disney film, but it once had a Disney connection. There's your hint. All right, get in here. Clam chowder time. You know, that's actually pretty good. I'm not a huge seafood fan, but I am a huge soup fan. I love good soup. Um, and it's very creamy. It's not overwhelmingly seafood flavored. Like, it's not super salty or anything. It's just really creamy. Got a little bit of pepper. Nice herbaceous flavor. I'll try a little bit of this. Dunk. Do the dunk, as I like to say. Some of that bread. Mm. Now that's very good. This is nice and hearty. Um, it's definitely maybe not what you want to eat on a nice hot day like today, but as we get more into the Florida winter, I think this is a really good option and definitely uh, shareable if you wanted to do this like as an appetizer and share out of a bread bowl with somebody and then also get an entree or this would be a great meal for someone. So I'm actually delighted by this one. About to grab our next snacks. They're all located at the Friar's Nook here in Fantasyland in the Magic Kingdom. And let me just tell you, the theme of these snacks are a little... 
wild. Can you even believe there are not one, not two, but three Mr. Toad theme treats for the 50th, throwing it back to one of the OG attractions. I believe Duckfist might be on a plane right this second trying to come eat these. He's going to specifically only eat these three things for the next 18 months, I'm pretty sure. Um, but we have a wild ride slush. It's kind of melty already, but um, it's a frozen wild sour cherry, blue raspberry, and sour apple slush topped with whipped cream, and then that's a black licorice steering wheel. We've also got the Mr. Toad Dome Cake. It's a peanut cake with chocolate peanut butter mousse and a salted caramel center. That is adorable. And then last but not least, we've got the Toad Brat Burger. So it's a burger with brat meat as opposed to um, your normal hamburger meat. And then it's got latest tomato pickle, American, and it's got tater tots, but it's of course designed to look like everybody's favorite Toad. First up, I'm gonna try the cake because it's melting. And yes, I did come stand in front of Winnie the Pooh to do this because I'm savage and because I also can't wait to see Duckfist comments on this video. Um, but here goes the peanut butter cake, the Mr. Toad cake. I'm not a huge fan of the like gelatinous covering on these kind of cakes, but I really like the peanut filling and there's actually like little crunchies in there. So I add, like that as a texture component because these are normally just really soft and loose. Like, so I like that there's a little crunch in there. It mostly tastes like peanut butter. I'm not getting a ton of chocolate, but it's obviously a super, super cute dessert. <laughs> Gonna try the slush. It's a warm day today. I'm excited for this. They went to the seven yeah, they just got on this Oh, it tastes like exactly what you think it's gonna taste like. It's a uh, slush of three different flavors. You get a little bit of definitely getting the black cherry, definitely getting the sour apple. Not a ton of the blue raspberry. I wish we didn't have so much whipped cream personally. I'm not a huge fan of whipped cream. Um, but if you want to, I mean, it's a slush. You all know what a slush tastes like. Um, but I love slushes because I think they're a great way to cool down and they're fun. So I like this one. But so far, I think the cake is the better of the toad treats because it's more unique. And it's time, friends. It's time to eat Mr. Toad. I know. I don't I don't want to any more than you do, but J Thaddeus Toad. This is for you. You know what's wild, pun very intended. It tastes like a brat. Like I know it I know it's brat meat, but in my head I was like, it's a burger. It tastes like eating a brat. But then you've got the pickle, the cheese, and the lettuce and all the crisp stuff. It's actually really good. I was am surprised. I mean, you have to like brats, of course. Yeah, I'm impressed. Definitely not spicy. Got a lot of good flavor in the meat. If you like brats, give this one a whirl, or if you just love Mr. Toad a lot. I don't think we'll be mad about this. Definitely better than like a burger at Cosmic Rays, in my opinion. Well done, Mr. Toad. I don't think it was worth your demise just to have this burger on the 50th, but thank you for this. Storybook treats has possibly the cutest and at this point meltiest treats. Um, this is the snow white cone So it's the lemon dole whip and then it's got the little bow and the bird and the blue cone to represent snow white And then this is the hi-ho sundae So it's a chocolate soft serve sundae with graham crackers and chocolate rocks So a little nod to snow white the OG princess and she had an opening day right here as well snow white scary adventures Wasn't called that but you know I love this a real bird just flew by. Do you think it sensed that I had a bird on my ice cream cone? Possible. Um, I love the lemon dole whip, so. Surprise, it tastes just like the lemon dole whip. Haven't had it in Disney World since the parks reopened. I had it in Disneyland, but I'm so glad it's back in Magic Kingdom. It's so good, it's so tart and refreshing, and it tastes like lemonade. I love it so much, and even though it's melting all over me. Trying the Sunday now. Mmm! I actually really like it. It just tastes like chocolate, obviously. But I like chocolate rocks a lot. Add a nice little crunch in with your soft serve. A little graham cracker action. I think I would definitely get the Dole Whip um, Lemon, the Snow White Cone, over the chocolate just because I think Dole Whip Lemon is a little more unique. It's more refreshing on a hot day than, um, than chocolate, but the chocolate one's very good. Definitely shareable. It's super cute. Our guest, be our guest, put our serves to the test. I'm inside Be Our Guest restaurant, if you couldn't tell by my beautiful singing, or you know, that. Um, for our next 50th treats, and these are a little bit 
There's, there's something. What some of you may not know is that Be Our Guest sits where 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea used to sit, which was the opening day attraction over in this area. So there's actually a couple things you can eat here at Be Our Guest as a nod to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Let's start with the cute one. This is a non-alcoholic drink called the Nautilus, named after the ship from the attraction. Um, and it is a blue raspberry slushy. It's got some Swedish fish on there and a very cute 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea glow cube. And it comes served in this little bowl. So I'm a big fan of this one. Anyone can enjoy that. Um, and it's very, very cute. Now let's get a little bit weirder here. This is called the Squid's Revenge. And it is a michelada with a salted rim and gar garnished with a piece of charred octopus and a cucumber. Because watch out, the giant squid is back. That's a thing you can eat if you like to. We're gonna try it. And then there's also a specialty appetizer for 20,000 Leagues. It's got a seaweed salad, cucumber, pickled beets, hearts of palm, tapioca crackers, a mousse, a carrot ginger silk, and of course, tentacles. Okay. I'm ready. I'm going to try the drink first. It's a good mejolada, which is basically like a Bloody Mary, but made with beer. You can definitely taste the Stella in there, taste the tomato juice. It's got a little bit of zing, a little kick to it. But now, the real challenge begins. dessert. It's called the Ned Land Sea Cake um, and it's lemon and strawberry madelines and then um, chocolate rocks, gray stuff, pistachio cake, and Swedish fish on it. So I just asked nicely if I could have this and they were like, yeah, absolutely. So here we go. I'm actually very excited about this because I love madelines, the cookies, and I love the gray stuff because as they say, it's delicious. This lemon madeleine is so good. It's very white, very moist. Madeleines almost taste like cake. Like they're like have the consistency of a cupcake, but they're a, a cookie technically. And um, 
The gray stuff really is delicious. It's cookies and cream mousse, and it's nice, and it almost is like whipped butter uh, consistency, and it's delicious. But let's try the strawberry one as well. Mm. Normally the ones I have are lemon, but that one is so good. It tastes like strawberry cake, which is one of my faves. Let's try the pistachio cake too. Also delicious and perfect. This is awesome. This is an A plus treat. I love this. Well done. This is what 20,000 links deserves. No one fights like Gaston, makes 50th treats like Gaston. Headed into Gaston's tavern next to get our very, very cute Mickey shaped cake for the 50th. Surprised it's not a Gaston themed treat. It's probably what he wanted, but it's not really 50th. What has Gaston prepared for us, you may be wondering? This beautiful Mickey Mouse dome cake. It's a spiced chocolate dome cake. It's filled with creme brulee, and then it is chocolate glazed with Mickey ears and the 50th Castle logo and a little edible glitter on top. Pretty nice of Gaston to make this, although I definitely don't believe Gaston is the kind of guy that makes anything, especially not for others. All right, here's the inside of the cake. You can see that creme brulee filling in there. That's made with eggs, right? So that's, I was trying to figure out how this related to Gaston's Tavern other than just like, let's throw treats places. But for the most part, things make sense where they are. And I think it's because creme brulee is an eggy based dessert and Gaston would dig that. All right, got a really good bite with all the layers. That is rich. That is your richest chocolate dessert that I've had so far, probably will have. It tastes like really good chocolate mousse. There's some cinnamon in there. There's some autumnal flavors. It tastes like just very hint. I don't know if I would know those are in there if it didn't say that in the description. Um, but it's very mousse-like in the consistency. The creme brulee flavor isn't super duper strong. The chocolate definitely overpowers anything else. So if you're a chocolate fan, it's a good one. Otherwise, in my opinion, I've had better things so far. Grabbed myself a couple of Dumbo-inspired treats. First of all, yes, I'm eating off a trash can. Did you really go to Disney on a busy day if you don't? Um, but also, these are the cutest trash cans ever because we're in Storybook Circus, so of course, everything's themed to Dumbo. We have two things here themed just to that favorite pachyderm. We've got Jumbo's Surprise. This is a popcorn and Twix uh, blend, and there's a hidden chocolate feather, which I already dug out, but it's very, very cute. And then this is also, I was really excited when I read about this one. It's called the Dumbo Churro. It's a churro, obviously, um, and it's actually been rolled in peanut dust, and then it comes with chocolate dipping sauce. So very cute, cute packaging. And let's see how these taste. Dumbo churro. Not bad. At first I couldn't really taste the peanut, but as I got into it, kicked up a notch. You already know I'm not the biggest churro fan because they always end up a little stale. I don't know why, but it's got that good cinnamony flavor that you um, expect from a churro. And then there is a little bit of hint of peanut on the back end. It's not a ton. It's not like overwhelmingly peanutty, but it's good and it's really cute. If you're a churro fan, I think you'll enjoy it. Let's sip it in the chocolate though. Mm. Okay, you gotta dip it. If you get this, the chocolate helps with the dryness of a churro and it kind of is accentuating the peanut flavor. So now it's got a Snickers vibe going. Now let's try this popcorn, which I am really excited about because I love popcorn. Hi, it's the editor. Sorry to interrupt. A funny story here. Uh, Molly lost the footage of tasting the popcorn. So she wanted me to let you know that as far as the caramel corn with Twix, it was, quote, legit good and tasted just like caramel corn with Twix in it, end quote. So back to the show. Possibly the best question mark? You can let me know in the comments. Snack I've seen so far. This is the Uncle Orville Sunday from Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies. This is of course a nod to Carousel of Progress and Uncle Orville. No privacy at all around this place as he sits in the bathtub with his patriotic hat on. So it's just um, chocolate vanilla swirl soft serve ice cream. There's some hot fudge whipped cream and then patriotic sprinkles for old Uncle Orville, their perennial house guest. There's a great big beautiful Sunday. Gonna put it in my mouth right now. Yeah, it tastes like a, a Sunday. Tastes like vanilla and chocolate soft serve, which is exactly what it is. Nothing that exciting. Um, I think 
the if you're gonna get one of these Sundays and you don't care about the bathtub, I think the high ho Sundays a little bit better just because I like the chocolate rocks on there. But who doesn't want a soft serve ice cream? And who really doesn't want this bathtub? What am I gonna put in this bathtub? That's the real question. Once it's all clean, so I'm done eating all this ice cream and I wash it out. I'll put it on my desk with like pins and as Princess Tiana once said, you gotta dig a little deeper. And I did, and I found there's brownie chunks in this baby. I forgot about those for a moment. You know what? These brownies that come with anti gravities, Quincy and I ate it in the Eating Everything in Tomorrowland video. We ate the normal one. <laughs> it literally tastes like a Betty Crocker brownie that you could make from a box in your own home. But I love it. I think they're so delicious. Um, and so yeah, I actually think this is a really good one if you've got a bigger group and you want something simple that everybody will enjoy. Who doesn't want brownie and ice cream? Simple, but I love, love, love that they're nodding to a, an underrated attraction and a great character. Would it be a celebration of Magic Kingdom if I didn't come see your friend and mine, Sunny Eclipse? I just love this alien jazz crooner. But this isn't just about Sunny Eclipse, this is about the Mission to Mars Burger. So this is a bacon macaroni cheese topped burger. And then it's got crushed cheese flavored puffs, which we all know as Cheetos on top. Of course it comes with fries, but isn't this just wild? Look at that. It's actually very good. Now, you know these are not my favorite food service burgers. I've said it before, I think they're dry, so you're definitely gonna wanna grab a condiment, but the macaroni and cheese does help. I really like the Cheeto flavor on top. I like the little crunch of rings, and I love skinny, regular Cheetos are my favorite um, over the big fat ones. So I, these are, that's what made the puffs for sure, like the crumble on top. It's very messy. I probably still have it stuck in my face somewhere. I've got it all over the table. It's like a beignet but um, right orange. And um, so it's still not the best burger patty, but the macaroni and cheese here is very good. It's nice and creamy. And then I do like the addition of the Cheeto on top. So I think this is fun. I think this is better than getting just a plain burger. I think you're just gonna wanna get a condiment for it. That said, flavor-wise, I gotta give it to the Toad Burger over this one. Trying a few treats from Casey's Corner now. This one is a chocolate silk pie. It's called a pressed penny chocolate silk pie because it's got this like penny themed decal, like what you would like a, what a pressed penny would look like. Um, but what's really special about this dessert is it was Walt's personal favorite dessert recipe, and they added it to the menu because they wanted to honor Walt. And then this I'm a little less excited about because you know how I feel about hot dogs. But this is a hot dog with um, funnel cake on the top of it, as well as like a strawberry jam situation. So I don't know who made that up, but I'm gonna try it. Also, for the record, I realize I said this is from Casey's and I'm sitting in Tomorrowland, but it really is from Casey's. I'm gonna let you in on a little BTS behind the scenes. Do I have stuff on my face? This is why I have friends. <laughs> I'm gonna let you in on a little behind the scenes magic on wild days like today where there are a million new snacks coming out and there's so much to cover. We have a whole team of people out here and everybody is running around getting as much as they can and covering everything. Um, and so my wonderful friend who's one of our reporters was in charge of getting the stuff at Casey's and she brought it over to me while I wait on my Cosmic Rays food um, because she knew I wanted to try this hot dog on camera. We wanted to split it so we could both give it a whirl, but that's a little BTS action for you. And mostly I just said that's because I'm stalling eating this monstrosity. No. Who did this? Who dared to do this for, for the Magic Kingdom's birthday? I don't like it, obviously, but I don't like hot dogs and it mostly tastes like a hot dog. There's a little bit of saltiness from the bacon, the tiniest bit of sweetness from the strawberry and the funnel cake on top. I actually wish there was more of the funnel cake pieces because I think I need more of the sweetness um, and more of the crunch from the funnel cake to counteract the hot dog. But that one's going to be a no from me, which doesn't seem like a surprise, but you know, maybe you'll love it. So I can't tell you if you'll like it or not. If you like hot dogs, you might love it.
but I did not. Okay, I am excited to try Walt Disney's favorite dessert. It's definitely melty and messy, but I like that it's in those little crust things that Disney does. Mm. Okay, I understand why that was his favorite. This is the winner to me over the chocolate dome cake from Gaston's Tavern. They're both super chocolatey, super rich, very similar because they give me a chocolate mousse vibe. But this one has the crunchiness from that um, chocolate shell. It's really, really creamy, simple chocolate, whipped cream on top. Um, and I don't even normally like whipped cream, but this tastes like hand whipped cream, not like ready whip out of a can. And this is just simple and delicious, and I understand why Walt liked it. Walt was a man of simple taste, um, and I love that they're sprinkling in some of his favorite things throughout the celebration. We'll eat more of Walt's favorites throughout this video. But to me, for the chocolate fans, this is definitely the best one I've had so far. For our next two treats, I am at the Plaza Restaurant in the Magic Kingdom. This is right at the end of Main Street USA. Gorgeous view of the castle in here. And they've got two very fun treats. One's an iconic that snack or sandwich that they brought back, and one is brand new. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you the Monte Cristo has returned to Walt Disney World. If you're not familiar, this is an iconic sandwich served at the Blue Bayou over in Disneyland. Um, and it's made its way onto menus now and again at Walt Disney World, um, but it's back. So this is a fried ham and cheese sandwich. But what makes this one special for the 50th is it's using funnel cake batter as opposed to the normal batter. And then it's got a lovely strawberry sauce for dipping. So this is the ultimate in Disney food right here. Right, here we go, I'm gonna dip this bad boy into the sauce. Now, when the Magic Kingdom opened, they had this on one of the menus. $1.75. So, times have a changed. There you go. It is so good. I love the funnel cake batter because it's light and fried and like nice and crispy and it's got the powdered sugar, but it's got tons and tons of cheese on there, a little saltiness from the ham sweetness from the, uh, the strawberry dipping sauce. I don't think it's quite as good as Disneyland, but it's pretty fantastic. And uh, to round out the Monte Cristo, we're gonna do just a small, simple dessert. The Cheers to 50 Years Sunday. It's chocolate and vanilla ice cream, brownies, cupcakes, cookie crumbles, pretzel rods covered in chocolate, hot fudge, whipped cream, iridescent sugar, and a literal Mickey pretzel shoved in there, caramel and chocolate icing. So this is like the ultimate in 50th desserts right here. There is a lot happening in this Sunday. <laughs> I'm about to be hit in the face of the pretzel rod, but. It's obviously delicious because I'm at the plaza, which is of course connected to the plaza ice cream parlor. So all their desserts are amazing. It's hand scooped ice cream. That brownie was so good. I'm gonna eat this pretzel rod. There's a literal Mickey pretzel in here that's glittery cupcakes. So nothing in here is like over the top flavor wise, but it's clearly over the top presentation wise. But I think it's fun. I think if you order this, your kids are gonna think they're the coolest person ever. And I think this is a really fun and ridiculous dessert. This might be my favorite part. Mickey's floating now. Because of magic. Not because there's someone else here. That was magic. Oh Would it be a Walt Disney World celebration without popcorn buckets that you can buy? I think the answer is always going to be no. There are a ton of new collectibles. There are sippers. There are popcorn buckets. This balloon comes in four different colors. Yellow, obviously. Pink, green, and blue. So you can collect all four if you want. These are only available in the Magic Kingdom. There's also a Mickey popcorn bucket and a mini sipper that matches. Those will be everywhere. There's new souvenir cups over at the resorts. All kinds of stuff, but I mean, an iridescent popcorn bucket. I needed it. Now I need to collect all four. I don't, but do I? Maybe. Well, friends, we've made it to Epcot next on our snack quest. We're only gonna try a few things here because actually most of the 50th snacks at Epcot are desserts and things at the full service restaurant. So we got 18 months to eat all of this stuff, but I have my eye on a few quick service snacks. 
Of course, Epcot is home to the best snacks anyway around the world and during the festival, so let's go check out a few of their new treats, though. Our first Epcot snack is actually the return of a fan favorite, but it's been dressed up for the 50th, of course, and that is the ear iridescent croissant donut, aka the Cronut. You can get it here at the Epcot Experience, which is also currently Brew Wing, one of the food and wine booths, but people loved the Cronut. You used to be able to get it up at the Electric Umbrella, may she rest in peace, and now you can get it here. I already got my coffee from Joffrey's, so I'm ready. Here she is, my Cronut. Now I know you're thinking, Molly, you hate donuts. And that is true. I do not care for donuts, but this is a croissant donut. So I think I'm gonna like it a lot more. I also don't love things that turn my face other colors because I'm a messy eater. So I don't need to chance having blue all over my face, but here we are, it's the 50th. What are you gonna do? Everything's blue. Great, you want this? Definitely better than a donut. But it also still tastes like a donut. This is what I hate. Um, okay, it still tastes like a donut, like it has that donut flavor, but it's a lot flakier and it's got the uh, the crispy, flake, flaky layers of a croissant as well. So I definitely like it more than a donut. It's not as fresh as I would like it, um, if I'm being completely honest. So if you are a donut person, I do think this one is fun. And I know people love a cronut, but honestly, if you are a donut person, you might be better off just going and getting the giant donuts that they serve at the Joffrey's around the park, at the Joffrey's carts. Those are actually made by a local Orlando donut um, shop called Donut King that people are obsessed with. So if you want like the best donut you can get at Epcot, it's going to be one of those donuts. But this isn't bad. I personally, again, like it more than a donut. It's really cute. I'm going to dunk it in my coffee now, and I'm glad I'm trying it because I'm glad the Cronut has returned for all of you that are Cronut fans. Our next snack is a basic one. It's just popcorn, but it's special for two reasons. One, this is the specialty popcorn carton for the 50th. Isn't it adorable? And two, I got it at this new popcorn cart in Epcot. So right now this popcorn cart just says classic popcorn. It's right outside the brand new creation shop. Hopefully one day Epcot will get their fun flavored popcorn back again. But for now, you can just get classic popcorn here. You can get it in this if you'd like, or they also have a 50th popcorn bucket that's refillable. I love this wall in Epcot. I love the bright colors of this wall. So I'm just gonna eat popcorn right here and, and enjoy mm. why is disney popcorn so good it's like the best popcorn ever it's so buttery and salty and delicious it's amazing so if you do are a popcorn fan i definitely recommend getting the bucket it's super cute there's also that popcorn bucket over at animal kingdom there's ones at magic kingdom that are exclusive there but you can always refill it for two dollars or if you just want a little popcorn you can get this cute one and this is all over the parks too, any of the parks. This next one is so beautiful. I'm like not even mad that it's blue. Look how gorgeous, first of all, the plate is. This is from Sunshine Seasons. This is a lemon chiffon cake. They actually had a couple of 50th desserts. They had a chocolate bun cake, they had this lemon chiffon cake, and then they had a surprise Remy's cheesecake, which looks like a piece of cheese, but it's actually just a cheesecake. But I love lemon a lot, so I went for the lemon chiffon cake. There's a blueberry mousse. And at, isn't this just gorgeous? Okay, so it's a beautiful lemon layered cake. Everything else. Now I love lemon, as I said, so you definitely have to love lemon as a flavor to enjoy this, but it is so light and moist and the cake itself is like so delicate. There's a very strong, delicious lemon flavor and then there's that creamy buttercream. I'm not getting a ton of blueberry flavor, probably because I'm avoiding the top part. That is fabulous. The problem with, of course, it being an Epcot, like if this was a Magic Kingdom, this would be my favorite dessert probably I've had of all, but the fact that it's an Epcot and it's hard for me to tell you to come eat this when I could tell you to go eat ice cream in France or a pastry in France or something from the caramel shop in Germany. And there's so many great desserts here in this park in general. But if you're here for 50th and you want something special, this one's beautiful and really, really delicious.
In what is for sure the most over-the-top dessert we've seen yet, I'm at San Angel Inn in Mexico, and this is the Fiesta Pyramid, a festively decorated chocolate pyramid filled with Mexican chocolate mousse and toffee. It's on a tres leches cake with Oreo um, and caramel-covered ice cream. So it's I just want you to know that working in this restaurant is like being an old-timey ghost hunter in an attic because I just keep moving this lantern on my table around to find the best light to video and photograph the food. So I'm like, is there a spirit here? But really it's me just like, can I take a photo of this tree? Anyway, let's try this tree. All right, so this entire thing is filled with Mexican chocolate mousse. So we must free it. It's a very labor intensive project here. I had a bite of the mousse uh, mid crack and it was very good, very creamy chocolate mousse. But I'm gonna get a bite of it with the tres leches cake. Tres leches, I know how to say it. I'm very tired, I guess. Um, and a little bit of the ice cream, a whole bite of, of everything all at once. The tres leches cake is very good, it's very cinnamony, it's got that traditional flavor. I actually really like the chocolate mousse. It also has kind of a cinnamon flavor to it, and it feels lighter um, and less rich than the one like in France, it's, which is my favorite one, but because you're eating so much of this, it's nice that it's not quite as intense and sweet. And then of course you've just got vanilla ice cream. This one is mostly about the show and the production of it, but it's actually very good. The mousse inside is very good. You have to like chocolate mousse though if you're going to get a literal pyramid full of it. Hooray for Hollywood. We have made it to our next park on our 50th anniversary treat quest. Gonna try a few things here. And spoiler alert, lots of things are covered in gold glitter, which I am here for. First stop in Hollywood, Rosie's All-American Cafe, where we are gonna get a glitzy looking snacking cookie. Here it is, how cute is this one with the decal on it, with the icons of Hollywood Studios over the year. I love it. Um, this is a pretzel shortbread cookie and then it's got strawberry jam and then a peanut butter fudge on the top so that little cute graphic is peanut butter fudge so it's kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich cookie i don't 100 percent know how to eat this because it's like kind of soft so i think it's going to fall apart when i bite into it but what is happening i'm obsessed with this oh my gosh this is so good <laughs> the pretzel shortbread is nice and firm and it's holding up everything, but it's got a nice crunch to it, but it's still kind of melt in your mouth, that buttery shortbread flavor you love. I love the strawberry jelly. It's giving me kind of Pop-Tart pop vibes. I don't taste a ton of the peanut butter. Even eating that piece on the top by itself, I don't get a lot of peanut butter. I mostly just taste the jelly and the pretzel shortbread, but this one is good. Like not over the top sickly sweet, not over the top dramatic. This is like a, a sleeper hit. This may be my favorite one in the Hollywood studios and I haven't even eaten anything else here yet. Update, I found the peanut butter fudge. I thought this was gonna be peanut butter, but that's just white chocolate. The peanut butter fudge was further in. So now I have to eat more. I mean, I was gonna eat more, but I'm gonna eat more on camera so that we can get the peanut butter flavor. We can go to the next park now. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Yeah, I'm obsessed with this. Well done, Hollywood Studios. They may not have given you a new fireworks show or even a new daytime entertainment. You can't find any 50th merch here, but man, did they crush this snack. Next gold magnificent treat. Coming to you from Epic Eats, this is the funnel cake stand and their Oreo funnel cake has gotten a 50th makeover. Here she is, the Glimmer and Shimmer funnel cake. So this is your classic funnel cake and then it's topped with chocolate sauce, vanilla ice cream and Oreos that they dipped in chocolate and dusted in gold. Look at this baby. This thing is massive. I don't even know how to eat these ever. I just kind of take pieces of the funnel cake and dip it in the ice cream. Disney knows how to do a funnel cake, and I'm going to be covered in powdered sugar. It's just a classic snack. They've had this forever. This just got a fancy makeover, but it's huge. Definitely shareable. Something a little more unique than, like, just plain ice cream. 
it's messy. But I've got another treat. This is called the Glimmer and Shimmer Churro. I got it at the Churro Cart right outside of Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. It's the most beautiful churro I've ever seen with gold on it and glitter. And it's got 50th paper that's different than the Magic Kingdom. This is like gold 50th paper. I think this churro is very beautiful and I hope it's more delicious than the one I had at Magic Kingdom. I think churros on their very nature are a dry snack, so having the frosting on it already helps. But this one doesn't taste stale, like that one is. No, it's okay. Yeah, this is the better of the two churros. It's super duper cute, it's beautiful, it's cold and glittery. I much preferred the blondie or the funnel cake or that snacking cookie over this, but if you do want a 50 churro, this one is very good, it's simple, it's cute, and it tastes fresher than the last one. Headed into Backlot Express to grab our last treat here at Hollywood Studios. Of course, there's more treats everywhere, but we're only showing like the best. I can't eat all 150 in one video, y'all. We got 18 months to eat all these treats. So just showing you the most fun and over the top for now. And we'll keep eating as we go throughout the celebration. How gorgeous is this? This is the Glimmer and Shimmer Blondie. So it's a gooey toffee and co toasted coconut blondie with salted caramel, buttercream, and festive gold nuggets. And I just gotta say, Hollywood Studios is crushing with these desserts. They're all so pretty. And I love that they went with the gold for 50 as opposed to the blue for iridescent everywhere else. She is ooey, she is gooey. Yum! Hollywood Studios, are you the winner? I'm a big coconut fan though, so I think you have to like toasted coconut. I also really like blondies, um, so mostly I'm getting coconut and then that gooey toffee flavors coming through. Really, really sticky, but really, really delicious. Absolutely stunning dessert, obviously big and shareable. Hollywood Studios is like crushing with these desserts because that peanut butter snacking cookie may be my favorite dessert I've had yet. And this is also fantastic, so is the funnel cake, so. Hollywood Studios didn't get much for the 50th, but they got some really good treats. Jumbo, everyone. We've made it to Animal Kingdom on our snack quest. There are several great things here. I cannot wait to try, including brand new flavored popcorn. Our next snack is coming straight out of this exclusive Animal Kingdom popcorn bucket. It's a Kite Tails bucket. You can get it filled with two different kinds of popcorn at the stand I was at. There's a chili lime or there's a celebration fruit flavored and I threw out all my sensibilities about hating artificial fruit flavor because look at it. It's beautiful. It's a rainbow of fruit. They said it's going to taste like Trix or Fruit Loops or something like that. Um, and I'm very excited to eat this and watch Kite Tales. Yeah, that tastes like fake fruit and high fructose corn syrup. But I actually like it more than other artificial fruit flavors because it still has the saltiness of the popcorn. And it is a refillable bucket, so you can refill it anywhere even though you can only buy it here for $2. So you can refill it with your classic popcorn and any popcorn card, or like in Canada, you can get the maple popcorn and Epcot. I'm gonna try the chili lime popcorn now. So it's chili lime caramel corn and it is made with the rainbow popcorn, but it also has some chili lime action in there. So I'm gonna give that a whirl. Um, this is not something that you can buy for the popcorn bucket refill, but you could buy another bucket if you wanted to. Mm. Chili on the front end, little lime zest on the back end. Definitely not spicy. And then putting it with the rainbow. It's kind of Kat Zaka's adjacent. You know how much I love Kat Zaka's. I like the combo better. You know me, I don't like sickly sweet things. It's not sickly sweet because it's the salty mixes, but it's definitely that artificial fruit flavor, which I am very much enjoying and I ate the whole bucket of, um, but I like the mix together. It's like kind of chaotic in a lot of flavors, but that's actually kind of perfect to put in this bucket. Our next Animal Kingdom snack can be found at the Anandapur soft serve ice cream truck. Um, it is a sundae in honor of Kite Tail, so it's strawberry and lemon flavored soft serve. So it's soft serve ice cream, not Dole Whip. Um, and then it's swirled, and then there's a cute medallion on the top with one of the Kite Tail's floats. Look how cute this thing is! I'm so excited about this one because lemon is one of my favorite dessert flavors and strawberry is one of my favorite ice cream flavors, so this was truly made for me. Okay, this thing is so cute and I'm very excited. Um, again, this is not Dole Whip, so this does have dairy in it. Um, so to my lactose intolerant or plant-based eaters, this one is 
not for you, but. Woo! Yum. Animal Kingdom is crushing with the snacks as usual. It's so light and refreshing. I like that. It, I actually don't love strawberry Dole Whip. So this is strawberry soft serve, so it tastes like strawberry ice cream. And the lemon is nice and refreshing and tart. This is one of my favorites yet. Yep, anywhere. And the perfect treat as I sit out here and melt before watching Kite Tales again. Coming up next, a snack you can actually get several places in different forms around Walt Disney World, and that is Walt's chili. Some of you may know that chili was one of Walt Disney's favorite foods, so to honor him for the 50th anniversary, they have added Walt's chili to a variety of menu items across Walt Disney World. You can get it at a bread bowl at some of the resorts, you can get it on top of a chili cheese dog, or you can get it here at Dino Diner in Animal Kingdom on top of a corn chip pie, which is the way I'm choosing to eat chili. This is that corn chip pie, again topped with Walt's favorite chili, so it's Fritos, chili, cheese, sour cream, and green onions. Mm. You may have had this before. People call it different things. It's very good. I don't know if it's better than any other walking taco I've had, but the chili is very good. I love that there's fresh jalapenos on there. Of course, you can ask for them to hold those, um, but I love the little bit of spice coming from that. The chili itself has good flavor. It's got those beans in there. But it's not spicy. The heat is coming from the jalapenos. Lots of crunchy corn chips, which are holding their texture, which is great. This is a fun one. I think this is a. Uh, I think the addition of Walt's chili all over the property is a really, really nice way to a nice way to honor him. So, um, if you like chili, definitely get some Walt's chili either whether it be the Red Bull at your resort um, or at it on a chili cheese dog. They have that a lot of places. Or this is definitely my preferred way on the corn chip pie. You know me, you know one of my all-time favorite sweet treats comes from right here at Dino Bite Snacks in Dino Land, USA. It is an ice cream sandwich where they have freshly baked cookies with real hand-scooped ice cream in the middle, and of course, they decked one out for the 50th. This is a beautiful dessert. It's got these chocolate, chocolate, uh, these fudge cookies, and then it's got um, the decal on it and all these beautiful iridescent sprinkles, and it's supposed to come with vanilla ice cream, but don't forget, with these ice cream sandwiches, either this one, the celebration one, or just the classic one, you can swap to any ice cream flavor they have. So I asked for strawberry, because that's my favorite of the flavors they had. These ones are always so difficult to eat. There's no beautiful way to do it, but... Whoever makes the cookies for these deserves a raise because they're hard enough to hold all the ice cream and not crumble and keep their structural integrity. But yet they're still chewy on the inside. They're not, I mean, they're hard, but they're not rock solid. And then I love that it's just hand scooped strawberry ice cream. The sprinkles are fun and add a little iridescent touch. These are, again, always one of my favorite snacks. My favorite is the strawberry shortcake one. Um, and I'm bummed they don't have a pumpkin spice one this year because that would have been this time of year. But I think these are simple and delicious and that's why I like them so much. Plus this one's really cute. Taking a relaxing moment to enjoy a cocktail at the Nomad Lounge, one of my favorite places in Walt Disney World. This is the Firefly 50th cocktail. This is a specialty cocktail. They have it here at the Nomad Lounge. Oh, wait, pause. We gotta listen to the drummers. I love that the floats go by at the Nomad Lounge. It's so fun. It's part of the reason I love coming here. Um, but this is a 50th cocktail, as you can see by the blue color. It is made with Casa Amigos tequila, pineapple juice. Um, it's got chili in it, lime juice, and some simple syrup. And it's actually glittery. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's actually iridescent. Cheers. Ooh, that is a good spicy mark. It's definitely sweet because of the pineapple juice and the simple syrup, but it does have a noticeable kick from the chili. I'm even going to put this pineapple with the spice on there. I love a spicy margarita. Personally, I still enjoy the Tempting Tigress, which is my favorite drink here. It's like their version of an old-fashioned. But if you're in the mood for something celebratory, it's not bad. Also, it's glittery, so that makes it always better. And you can sit here at the Nomad Lounge um, and enjoy the flotillas going by. They also have this drink over at the Dawa Bar, in case you can't get into the Nomad Lounge or you don't feel like um, sitting here, but honestly, I would sit here all day if I could. You know what it wouldn't be a 50th celebration without? A cocktail with blue curacao and a glow cube. These things just say Walt Disney World. So this is the Magical Beacon Cocktail. You can get it at basically all of the lounges around property and it's made with gin, obviously blue, cura blue curacao. It's got lemonade in it, um, almond syrup, lemon, hibiscus grenadine, and of course, 
a magical glow cube. You know, this may be the best blue curacao drink I've had in Walt Disney World, simply because it doesn't also have pineapple juice. Normally when they make these, they're really, really sweet. This one um, is more gin heavy, so you have to like gin, I'd say, to enjoy this. But it's very um, floral and refreshing versus really, really sweet. I would say the gin and the lemonade are the strongest flavors. I'm not getting a ton of the almond syrup or the hibiscus, but I would say it's lighter and more refreshing than a lot of blue drinks at Disney World. So, cheers to the 50. Get ready for a tongue twister of a drink name because Disney introduced something called the iridescent sip operation to the lounge and table service menus across property. So all of them come served the same way. They are a glass of lemonade right here um, in this very cute little 50th cup with Dumbo and some other characters on it. And then it gets served with a character and you can kind of like balance them on your cup and there's four different ones. There's pink, blue, green, and yellow, and they're all a different character. And then once you drop this into the drink, stir it a little bit, it will become a glittery, fruity punch drink. Yeah, it just tastes like lemonade. It doesn't really have much of a stronger fruit flavor, but I love lemonade, and I think this is really fun. I was told that all of them are supposed to taste the exact same, so even if you get a yellow one or a blue one or a green one, they're all going to taste the same. It's going to be a fun little adventure if you want to get multiple of them. You can collect all four, and I think this is really fun, and it's glittery and pink, so I love it. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed tagging along as we tried some of the brand new treats for the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary. There were a ton of great ones, there were a ton of beautiful ones, and there were a few that maybe I wouldn't need to eat again. Some of the highlights for me are that Monte Cristo at the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. I really enjoyed that dessert over at Be Our Guest. I really liked the Toad Burger. I thought that the Coconut Dole with the Pog Juice themed after the uh, Tiki Room was fantastic here at Magic Kingdom as well. Over at Epcot, I really, really liked that lemon cake over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I loved the blondie. I loved that snacky cookie. That might be my winner overall. In Animal Kingdom, I loved that strawberry lemon soft serve. I also loved that fun popcorn, the ice cream sandwich, spicy margarita. There's some really good stuff out here, and I'm obsessed with the sip abrasion that you can get at the lounges and table service restaurants around property. And I think it's safe to say that my least favorite was the octopus drink at Be Our Guest for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I don't know what Captain Nemo did to deserve that, but... Let me know which treat you're most excited to try. We've got 18 months of this, so we will continue to cover treats, so I hope you're excited to follow along. Let me know what questions, what treat looked the best to you down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.